the end of 10. Support for Windows 10 ends on October 14th, 2025. Microsoft wants you to buy a new computer. But what if you could make your current one fast and secure again? <laughs> Okay, uh, en enough with the overly dramatic voiceover. If you bought your computer after 2010, there is most likely no reason to throw it out. By just installing an up-to-date Linux operating system, you can keep using it for years to come. Installing an operating system may sound difficult, but you don't have to do it alone. With any luck, there are people in your area ready to help. Okay, so what is this? This is uh, endof10.org. This is sort of like a uh, community-driven, grassroots... I don't want to say advertising campaign, but it's like a, it's kind of like a campaign just to say that like, hey, installing Linux isn't uh, scary or anything. Gives you five good reasons why you should install Linux on your system if you actually kind of care. Listen, if you're on a website like this and this kind of a thing is on your radar, if you're watching this video right now, you're already in the right headspace and you already have the right mindset to install Linux. So hopefully this kind of explanation right here will uh, make it a little bit easier for you. So reason number one, we got no new hardware, no licensing costs. You don't got to pay for a, uh, a Windows license key if you just want to use Linux with it. I mean, we already saw a, a prime example of this with the, what was it called again? It was the Lenovo Ally legion go s or something like that i forget the name there was a version with windows installed and then there was a version with linux installed and not only was the linux version cheaper it also kind of uh, you know beat performance of the device on the windows side of things like you you can watch the video by uh, dave 2d about this kind of thing. Very interesting stuff. Uh, number two, enhanced privacy. Windows comes with a lot of ads and spyware. This slows down your computer, lets companies spy on you, and increases your energy bills. That is very true. That is very true. I mean, I abandoned uh, Windows three years ago when I even start, started catching like a, a whiff of Microsoft getting, you know, too gung-ho about the spyware and the ads and everything. Dude, the amount of ads that are in just the Windows 11 install thing, the amount of times you get advertised to during that is unreasonable and should be illegal in my opinion. Uh, reason number three, good for the planet. The production of a computer accounts for 75% or more of its carbon emissions over its life cycle. Keeping a functioning device longer is a hugely effective way to reduce emissions. With a Linux operating system, you can use your device for longer. A very good point to have, right? Another thing that we can talk about is like, you know, e-waste and how uh, certain computers and certain hardware manufacturers just kind of make e-waste, right? <laughs> I mean, if you've used a laptop that was like underpowered for a Windows install or anything, I guarantee you that laptop or that low power device would do perfectly with Linux on it. Less e-waste, less stuff going into the dump. Uh, you don't have to keep buying new things and have companies produce more computers. Just use the stuff you already have for longer. I know that that's really counterintuitive for an American consumer-focused culture, but hey, we gotta start thinking about it at some point, right? <laughs> Uh, number four, community and professional support. There are local repair cafes and independent professional services and computer shops available for providing you help. You can find support in online forums too. This is another good thing to have, right? I will say this one is a little bit lessened because of really weirdly strict hardware availability for repair shops and stuff like that. It's repair shops are in a really weird position right now, and I want it to get better. Obviously, I want there to be more mom and pop run uh, computer repair stores and have that be the norm instead of just going down to a fucking geek bar or whatever. And oh, my God, don't even get me fucking started on that stuff. It's just I, I want this to be more true, basically. And then number five, better user control. Linux grants you the four freedoms of software. You are free to use, study, share, and improve the program for as long as you wish. You are in control of your device. This, this was a, such a big one for me a few years ago when I decided to switch over because even in Windows 10, I could tell that Microsoft was trying their damnedest to make sure that the PC I bought, that the hardware I own, that the software I paid for, they were trying their hardest to make sure that I wasn't able to control any of it. 
and it sucked. It sucked back then. It's even worse now, right? And gotta say, I've had a blast just having my own my own control, my own freedom here on Linux. Like this, I can say with 100% certainty that I have had a better time here, you know? Now, something that is actually kind of funny is that I have already talked about this. I made a video, uh, you, you, there's me when I used to have hair, haha. <laughs> I made a video talking about this stuff uh, about a year ago now, actually, where uh, I posed the question, you know, what happens when Windows 10 goes EOL? And uh, I watched through this entire video and I really do agree with everything I said still. Um, the only thing that I would slightly disagree on is based on people's responses to Linux and stuff like that. I said in this video that like, hey, what if what if the usage of Linux goes up to 15 percent? Even 15% I think is a little bit too much. I think if anything, 10% is the maximum we'll see at the start. And if if this end of 10 transition actually goes really well, then maybe that can go higher, but we'll just we'll just have to see. And beyond just convincing you that, you know, installing Linux is actually cool and sleek and you should do it, uh, this website also kind of is like a worldwide like map essentially of like, hey, here are all the people who said that they know how to install Linux. Here's the people who said that they could help and y make it easier for you, right? Uh, you know, not a whole lot of people in the States doing that because, you know, hmm. But Europe, like, oh my God, dude, the people around here are working hard to make Linux a more household name, you know what I mean? But Linux is already kind of widespread in this area. You got people in like India and South America. We got one person uh, 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 down here near Melbourne in Australia, just like, you know, fighting the good fight down there. <laughs> Keep trucking, soldier. People in Alaska, like, dude, like there's, there's people all over who could help you with this stuff. And then you get like a full comprehensive list of all these people with like their websites and addresses and contact information and everything. Like these repair shops will definitely help you out if you happen to be near them, which is a little bit of an issue considering like, hey, you know, you may or may not be near these people. And then you've got all the help of like all these organizations and everything like KDE Plasma or EOS or OpenSUSE or fucking GNOME. Debian, uh, a few other ones that I half recognize. Zorian OS, LibreOffice. I don't know what this one is. Is this Europe OS? What the fuck is this? Oh yeah, <laughs> EU OS. I actually didn't know about this. That's awesome, that's awesome. And then what I think is extra cool is uh, there's this button right here, install Linux yourself. And it's a, it's a it bare bones, I'll admit, but it is a pretty good uh, DIY install guide, right? I think that obviously you could do a lot to help people out. Uh, unfortunately, you know, regular people, they're not going to look at this page and just be like, oh yeah, that's totally easy. I'll just, I'll just do this. A lot of people when it comes to uh, installing Linux and stuff like that, they need like guides, like proper walk you through this kind of guides. I'm hoping to change that in the near future, just as a little bit of a teaser of what's to come. But I think this is a good jumping off point, right? Obviously there are still a, lot, a whole lot of questions about like, what is a distro and what distro should I go with? And does it actually make a difference? And yada, 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 yada. And there's a, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about in terms of just installing a, a Linux distro and everything. I do like that they're uh, pointing you towards Rufus. I think Rufus is a much more complete tool, I guess, you can do a lot with it. Like you can um, use Rufus to flash uh, Windows 11 um, installation medias that kind of bypass the uh, TPM requirements and a few other things here and there. Like you can, you can mess with stuff with Rufus. I, I think it's a, I think it ultimately it is better than what the normal recommendation would be, which is Balina Etcher. Like Balina Etcher works. It's, it's simple, it's fast, it gets the job done all that fun stuff. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I, I, I will agree that Rufus is, here we go, that Rufus is probably better for you to learn. It doesn't look as fancy, it doesn't look as flashy, but eh, yeah, you know, that's just how it is sometimes. What the fuck is this? Events. Oh, look at this. Here are some events that can help you, uh, and you can get help with Linux. Hold on, what kind of events are we doing here? Okay, okay, we have a couple ones over here in uh, near like Vancouver and shit, like that's neat. Let me actually scroll down here. 
You got one near Boston. You got one up in Eureka, Eureka, California. Um, and then a bunch, again, a bunch in Europe, dude. Like, they're just kind of on top of it. Um, and again, there's there's Buddy. Oh, no. This is a... Okay, so, dude was over here near Heelsville, but this one is... Ballarat. <laughs> I don't fucking know Australian city names. I apologize. But there are events happening everywhere to hopefully, like, get people on board with this. End of 10, Montreal... Zen Family Dental plus Linux install party. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. And there's like workshops and shit that people are working on. I think that's awesome. And obviously, right, there is no shortage of uh, guides here on YouTube. Oh, hi, VTubers. Um, <laughs> how to install Linux. Bam, you got plenty of different guides here. Some of them are a little bit older than others. Some of them are a little bit more up to date, but you got stuff that's like a month old from, oh, Mental Outlaw, look at that. <laughs> He's a character for certain. But yeah, like I said, opinions aside, you have no shortage of guides and people willing to help. I'm, again, I'm gonna be dipping my dipping my toes in. Um, here, you know what? Here, how to install Bazite. So we got some people who's you know trying to help you install Bazite on uh, on your computer and everything. You got people like uh, ETA Prime here. You know, excellent excellent channel talking about like lower end hardware and Bazite and in small form factor stuff. It's cool. It's cool. And dude, it's it's just like it's just fucking everywhere, man. I will admit I have not used Bazite yet. And I'm hoping that uh, SteamOS will be will have like a wider release sometime soon, so that way we can just kind of point to that and be like, hey, if you want to play video games, just use SteamOS. But for the time being, everyone in the Linux gaming communities is all pointing at Bazite and saying like, this is the one, right? This is the one that you should recommend to people. And there's a myriad of reasons that I'm not going to get into because they're very inside baseball, Linux-specific kind of discussion points. Um, ultimately, I'm just going to agree with the majority here and just be like, hey, here's Bazite here. Fuck it. Let's just uh, Bazite. Let's just go on their way. You can go to Bazite.gg and they, oh, happy Pride Month, everybody. And you can just go on here and there's a bunch of different stuff and you can go to ProtonDB also. ProtonDB is your one-stop shop for checking what games are and aren't compatible with Wine, which honestly, there are there really aren't a lot of games that are incompatible with uh, Proton and Wine at this point. Most of them are going to work fine. Like I always say, the only ones, let's let's look up Call of Duty. Here we go. See all the old Call of Duties, they work fine. Some of the some of the slightly more recent ones, they were starting to get whatever. And then you get into modern Call of Duty and these ones don't work because of their god awful kernel level anti cheats. One day I will make a video just screaming about kernel level anti cheat and why it's garbage and why we should just abandon any game that still uses kernel level anti cheat, but that is a topic for another day. But anyway, like back to end of 10 here. Uh, they got an RSS feed, uh, you know, here on uh, on their website. You can subscribe to that. You can get news updates from them. You can see like what kind of stuff that they're working on. Um, I do want to sign up and contribute to End of Ten. Um, I think any videos that I make on installing Bazite or any other Linux distros or doing any of my uh, tutorial explaining videos that I really really want to do soon. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach out to these guys and be like, hey. These are my videos. I try to make them as approachable as possible. Yada, yada, yada. You can just send these out to people. Hopefully, you know, that that helps. Because at the end of the day, this is like, it, I just want to help people, right? I, I just want to make Linux seem more approachable because it really has impacted my life in a, in a mostly positive way. There have certainly been some negatives to it. And like nothing is wholly positive or wholly negative. But I think ultimately... Switching over to Linux, learning stuff, and growing as a person, I feel like this this whole thing was like, hey, it's it's a mostly positive thing for me. 
and that's why I'm making this this really really quick video this really low effort video just to say like hey end of 10 is here you have a spot if, if you happen to find my channel from like emulator stuff or controller videos or an, or any of the other like weird gaming centric videos that I do and you're concerned about the end of life of Windows 10 go to end of 10 start looking around at end of 10 here you know what let's just let's go on YouTube and let's just type end of 10 yep. end of 10 let's see so we have a few people talking about it hopefully this this whole movement takes up uh builds more traction and everything i i just think that this shit is really cool right and, and i wanted to talk about it um i'll also have a link to this video in the description because a lot of what i said actually does still kind of apply um, and I, and I do still really agree with it. I'll actually put like fucking end of 10 in the, in the hashtags down here and everything. Um, and there's some good advice and some good talking points here in the comment section. Uh, there's, there's a lot of cool people talking about stuff. So very good methods there. Th these, these methods exist for you to switch off of, um, off of windows. Right. And of course you don't have to, right. If, if you're still watching this video though, you kind of owe it to yourself. The people who are never gonna switch over to Windows, aren't even here on this video. So why, like, who cares? Just just try it. Just try installing Linux. I promise you it will be worth it. Anyway, thanks again. This video has no sponsor. This, thank you to the, the lads. Uh, they're cool. You're cool for watching. Have, have a good one. <laughs>